compounds and compounds is discussed only in groups especially in inorganic chemistry we discuss the behavior boron trifluoride always wants a pair of electrons it is in need of pair of electrons because it is electron deficient so it is called a lewy acid so what you study in a topic called ionic equilibrium the theories of acids and bases the reason lies in groups the reason lies in inorganic chemistry and especially uh, uh, the groups the group 5a 6a 7a which you have at senior intermediate level plus 2 level they are all very significant not just a part of inorganic but they form a part of organic and they form a part of uh, uh, physical chemistry also why suppose cobalt 3 plus ion is there six ammonias come in contact with that form a complex called hexamine cobalt 3 there you should know why is ammonia donating it is called a ligand in coordination compounds it is called a ligand and why is ammonia donating a pair of electrons we have already just told that is to get rid of the lone pair to move from pyramidal to tetrahedral so why atoms and molecules and compounds behave the way they do the reason lies only in groups only in inorganic chemistry inorganic chemistry forms a basis for the whole chemistry ammonia acts as a nucleophile what is a nucleophile you what you study in organic what is a nucleophile which which interacts with uh, partial positive charge on carbon why does ammonia interact with partial positive charge same reason ammonia wants to get rid of a lone pair so where do you learn that ammonia has indeed got a lone pair of course you learn that in chemical bonding and you learn the same again in groups also so the behavior of molecules h2o2 hydrogen peroxide hydrogen peroxide is used as an antiseptic it uh, it kills bacteria why and how it kills bacteria hydrogen peroxide you have an oxygen oxygen single bond which is a very weak bond because of four lone pairs present on both of the oxygens they face the two oxygen atoms face tremendous repulsion therefore the oo bond is weak since the oo bond is weak the oxygen atom is easily given out so a substance which contains a peroxy bond easily gives out that oxygen atom therefore bacteria dies of oxygen whereas we live of oxygen bacteria dies of oxygen so all these things the stable electronic configuration the stable geometry the stable bonds all these things we study in groups only therefore without groups without p block without inorganic chemistry the rest of chemistry cannot be understood easily because it forms the basis you must have heard about aniline aniline a molecule in which nh2 is uh, placed on a benzene ring nh2 is on benzene ring and that nh2 releases a pair of electrons to the benzene ring and thus activates the benzene ring the question is why does it release the pair of electrons the same reason ammonia donates a pair of electrons to get rid of a lone pair even in nh2 there is a lone pair so molecules with lone pair in the central atom they behave the same wherever they are not necessarily on benzene their behavior is unique they have a unique behavior unlike we human beings we may have so many troubles but elements and molecules their uh, trouble is only one they face only one trouble once that is cleared they actually uh, i mean they become spectators they don't react further on so the moment ammonia donates its lone pair of electrons to become uh, uh, tetrahedral uh, you can say ammonium ion is less reactive so that uh, amino group on benzene releasing a pair of electrons and uh, activating the benzene ring which is called plus m effect mesomeric effect what you study in organic the basis is formed found only in groups ammonia is a lewy base who is a lewy base one who donates a pair of electrons so ammonia acts as a nucleophile so the nucleophile plus some effect in organic and uh, uh, ability to donate a pair of electrons and acting as a lewy base in ionic equilibrium theories of acid base in physical chemistry and so so many things we study only in groups for example 
all non metal atoms all non metal atoms for example like sulfur phosphorus nitrogen all of them want to form as many bonds as possible why to get rid of lone pairs they want to get rid of their lone pairs therefore they want to form as many bonds as possible that is why sulfite so3 2 minus so3 2 minus sulfur has a lone pair if you lo look at it carefully sulfite sulfur is in plus 4 oxidation state and sulfur has a lone pair therefore most of the reaction sulfite wants to become sulfate by losing two more electrons we just study that sulfite acts as a reducing agent and the reason lies in groups the reason lies in inorganic chemistry sulfite is a reducing agent it loses electrons that you do in a uh, while balancing reactions so3 2 minus becomes so4 2 minus and uh, the change in oxidation state is plus 4 to plus 6 plus 2 why why does it why why does sulfate want to become sulfate that reason lies uh, in because of the effect of lone pairs so how can a molecule which has got its octet combine with another molecule with or without octet why are molecules combining at a lower level you have studied that atoms combine to get octet that is over now you are into your plus 2 level now you have to study reactions of uh, carbonyl compounds aldehydes and ketones reactions of alcohols you have to study reactions of sulfur dioxide you have to study the reactions of um, maybe ammonia boron trifluoride so we are talking about compounds we are talking about molecules mind you how and why a molecule combines with another molecule what was the earlier question how an atom combines with another atom there the primary uh, need was to get the octet now we have come to the secondary stage where a molecule combines with another molecule perhaps to get a better shape better geometry sulfides which are pyramidal they want to become sulfates where they can enlarge their arena from pyramidal to tetrahedral they get uh, uh, bet, uh, lower repulsions therefore all non metals want to form as many bonds as possible you will be surprised even pcl5 pcl5 with 10 electrons in its outermost shell phosphorus has 5 when it combines with 5 chlorines it has 10 electrons even pcl5 reacts with another cl minus forming pcl6 minus that is quite surprising why even after you have got 10 electrons you are still uh, weighing for electrons running for electron pairs it is surprising but the fact lies in pcl5 has a trigonal bipyramidal geometry whereas pcl6 minus is octahedral and octahedral geometry uh, atoms are arranged in a square base where a trigonal bipyramidal atoms are arranged in a triangular base a triangular base where atoms are more crowded atoms are crowded in pcl5 pcl6 minus atoms are a little relaxed pcl5 in solid state exists as pcl4 plus and pcl6 minus what does it tell us the trigonal bipyramidal geometry is not liked by pcl5 therefore it wants to become pcl4 plus which is tetrahedral pcl6 minus which is octahedral why does it happen in solid state only for this to happen molecules should two molecules of pcl5 should come close and only then that is, this will happen so all these things we study only as a part of groups all these things so inorganic chemistry especially groups form a base for the rest of chemistry be it organic or be it physical and uh, like uh, out of 60 marks for intermediate you can easily expect 15 marks from groups you will be asked the names of oxy acids what is pyrophosphoric acid so in our lectures you will study what pyro is we don't teach you pyrophosphoric acid we just teach you what pyro is pyro means acid plus acid minus h2 so in our e lectures uh, whenever you happen to go through them what you will find is procedures not just uh, data data could be there in any book you can have data from any book what we give is procedure how to find anything so you will be asked about uh, number of pi bonds in pyrophosphoric acid questions like this appear at ip level intermediate public examination 15 marks out of 60 25% weightage and you can easily expect 
10 questions based purely on groups uh, at MSET level. And same uh, what you call weightage is there for both IIT and AEEE, especially at IIT, you can't understand anything without the help of this. Between ammonia and water, you might have learned that ammonia is a stronger base. Why is ammonia a stronger base? Nitrogen has a lone pair. Oxygen also has got two lone pairs in water. In H2O, oxygen has got two lone pairs. Nitrogen has got only one lone pair. So, if ammonia donates that lone pair, it immediately gets a tetrahedral shape and it gets whatever it wants. But with water, water which has two lone pairs, even after donating one lone pair, there is still one more lone pair. So, oxygen atom is not eager to donate that lone pair. So, whereas nitrogen is more eager to donate and more eager to get tetrahedral, oxygen does not donate that with the same kind of enthusiasm as nitrogen does because even after donating one lone pair, there still is another lone pair. Therefore, what you study at IIT level especially where reasoning has a greater significance, everything should be explained only with reason, the basis, the reason, the modus operandi is decided only in inorganic chemistry especially groups. I, IIT, IIEEE, all exams have that one third <coughs> weightage because you know inorganic, organic, physical three parts in any exam almost equal weightage is there to all the three parts. Therefore, it is almost 30 percent in any exam, the significance, the role of uh, groups of course, along with topics like metallurgy and uh, coordination complexes, but whatever happens in other topics, only groups you will study the basis. Okay. So, what I recommend whenever it is possible or whenever you have a chance to go across CAB TV, you do watch groups and you learn groups, uh, I can say with uh, 10 times more attaching 10 times more significance than to any other topic and it won't take very long. You can in double quick time you can learn the basics not there aren't many basics in chemistry hardly you will find 50 60 principles just learning 50 60 principles you can look at the whole picture of chemistry and that is possible only through groups. Music